We should Knowing all say what that. you know now, do you regret making that phone call, Rana? I regret the fact that people are being threatened for doing their job in this country. I think it's wrong to say, I want a simple audit. She called me a propagandist, but I've been called worst. I do have a few questions for her whenever she might want to come on this program, and I'll make it easy for her. I'll tell her the questions ahead of time. My first question would be, why did you change your name for Donald Trump? Before Trump ran for president, her name was Ronna Romney McDaniel. How does that feel to change your name to curry favor with a madman because he doesn't like your uncle? I mean, does damn even cut it? Let's see. To change your name to curry favor with a madman. Damn! Yeah, it always works. Who am I kidding? So if you've been out of touch with the news world recently, let me bring you up to speed on the matter of a former Republican National Committee chair slash election denier turn NBC contributor. Well, I put an asterisk next to that last part because after this response, who knows what's going on. After it was announced that NBC News was hiring Ronna McDaniel, it caused a firestorm across the network with multiple hosts blasting the decision live on air. The person who is the head of the Republican Party during Donald Trump's time in office and during his effort to throw out the election result and stay in power anyway, and during his effort to run for election again after having done that, is Ronna Romney McDaniel. And she pitched in and helped. She helped set in motion the part of the plot that involved sending fake Trump electors to Congress from states that Trump did not win. So Republicans in Washington could use those fake fraudulent elector slates to contend that maybe Trump did win those states even though he didn't. And don't believe me on that. There she is on page 23 and page 27 of the federal indictment charging Donald Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States. There's her personal appearance in this scene of the crime as alleged by the U.S. Justice Department in this ongoing criminal case. In Michigan, where the fake electors are themselves now on trial, she told the state of Michigan in writing explicitly, do not certify the election results. The Detroit News has reported that with Donald Trump on the phone with her, she directed Michigan election officials to not certify the vote. She told them, quote, do not sign it. We will get you lawyers. She pitched in. She was part of the project. And what was the project? It was to use the power of the Republican Party, Republican officials in the states, Republican office holders in Washington, the national Republican Party that she runs, to use the party's power to reject election results, to take over the government and hold power by other means. And this project is now ongoing, right? Now the project is to tell the American people that those efforts around the 2020 election were righteous, that 2020 election, it wasn't okay. Those election results were not correct. We shouldn't believe American elections. We shouldn't believe American elections are real elections. American election results should not be seen as real. They should not be respected. That's the project now, right? But of all the in-house criticisms, I have to say that host Lawrence O'Donnell's take may have cut the deepest. There is an easy way to avoid the controversy NBC News has stumbled into. Don't hire anyone close to the crimes. While many pundits noted McDaniel's role in promoting the false claim that the 2020 election was stolen from former President Donald Trump, Lawrence decided to focus on the fact that McDaniel, who previously went by Ronna Romney McDaniel, dropped her uncle Mitt Romney's last name because the senator had clashed with Donald Trump in the past. I mean, talk about selling your soul to the devil. She wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for her. So she has, she has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Yeah. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf of who's paying her? There's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this because many of our professional dealings with the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting, mm. have been met with character assassination. She called me a propagandist, but I've been called worst. She was not hired by MSNBC. I found out about it on Friday when it was publicly announced. 
I stopped inviting Trump liars like her on this program in 2016 because I've never seen a satisfying, successful interview of a Trump liar and have never thought that I alone could crack the code of how to interview a Trump liar. They are fast and furious liars, and I doubt that I could keep up. I would never interview Ronna McDaniel as an expert on Republican campaigns the way I frequently interview my longtime friend, Stuart Stevens, who ran her uncle Mitt Romney's presidential campaign. MSNBC will not use Ronna McDaniel as a political analyst, but I do have a few questions for her whenever she might want to come on this program, and I'll make it easy for her. I'll tell her the questions ahead of time. My first question would be, why did you change your name for Donald Trump? Before Trump ran for president, her name was Ronna Romney McDaniel. How does that feel to change your name to curry favor with a madman because he doesn't like your uncle? How did you explain that to your kids? What lesson did your kids learn from that? And I mention her kids because she always mentions her kids and that she's a mother whenever she is speaking publicly. And then I would ask her about everything she did to try to help Donald Trump overthrow the election that she yesterday decided to say for the very first time four years late that Joe Biden won fair and square. There is an easy way to avoid the controversy NBC News has stumbled into. Don't hire anyone close to the crimes. And the thing is, while changing her name may seem small up against the slew of lies and disinformation that she has peddled, it's indicative of this insular, cultish, nonsensical effort that one has to go to to appease the Republican frontrunner. Do you not have a responsibility as the RNC chair to say before January 6th, the election is not rigged? that Donald Trump lost, given that there were audits, given that there were more than 60 sort court cases that occurred all across the country, Listen, and that Donald Trump lost. The reality is Joe Biden won, he's the president, he's the legitimate president. I have always said, and I continue to say, there were issues in 2020. I believe that both can be true. You can say massive laws were changed, they were changed through courts or through secretaries of state and not through the legislative process. Yes. In the name of the pandemic, yeah. That took away safeguards to the election. But, you, but acknowledge, should... you acknowledge those, what you're talking about, did not rise to the level in any way of overturning any Remember of the Kristen, state's election Remember, in November, results. which, by the way, is when that call took place, in November. Yeah. The election happens in November. We're getting so much incoming. Yeah. We have a job to say this was done correctly. Yeah. And, I, and, and I'll just finish about Wayne County. Yeah. You know, there were precincts that didn't align. That's a fact. That's yeah. not yeah. propaganda. Let That's me just, a fact. I mean, at this point, no wonder the Republican Party cannot shake the idea that they would tear apart the Constitution to appease a dictator. When you see elected officials bending to his every request, whether it be vetoing a bipartisan border bill or changing their own name, it should sound the alarm across the country for anyone who cares about preserving democracy. Because if they'll change their family name for him, what else would they do? Let me deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid contributor by NBC News. Well, I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Mm. Um, she wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for her. So she has, she has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Yeah. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf of who's paying her? What, once at the RNC, she did say that, hey, I'm speaking for the party. I get that. That's part of the job. So what about here? I, I will say this. I think your interview uh, did a good job of exposing, I think, many of the contradictions. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this, because many of our professional dealings with the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting. Mm. have been met with character assassination. So it is, it, you know, that's where you begin here. And so um, when NBC made the decision to give her NBC News's credibility, you gotta ask yourself, what does she bring 
NBC News. And when we make deals like this, and I've been at this company a long time, you're doing it for access. Access to audience. Sometimes it's access to an individual. Mm -hmm. um, and we can have a de journalistic ethics debate about that. And I, 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 I'm willing to have that debate. And if you told me we were hiring her as a technical advisor to the Republican convention, I think that would be certainly um, defensible. If you told me we're, we're talking to her, but let's, let's see how she does in some interviews and maybe vet her with actual journalists inside the network, see, see if it's a two-way, mm -hmm. what she can bring the network. So I do think, unfortunately, this interview is always going to be looked through the prism of right. who is she speaking for, right. Right? right? I think you did everything you could do. You got put into an impossible situation yeah. booking this interview, and then all of a sudden the rugs pull out from under you. You find out she's being paid to show up. That's, that's unfortunate for this program, but I am glad you did the best that you could, and that's why the three of us are on here to, to try to um, bolster that editorial independence. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.